Hello, this is Aloisa with Math Leopard. Today we are going to learn how to easily plot roses in the plane using polar coordinates. So let's get started. Consider the rectangular coordinate system in X and Y. Let's first superimpose radii of integer magnitude from 1 to 6, followed by the angles listed on the unit circle. We note that the four cardinal directions have radian measure 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2 respectively. Those angles which measure 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians from the x or horizontal axis are given by pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 respectively. Moving to the 45 degree reference angles, we arrive at pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Finally, noting the 60 degree reference angles, we have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Now let's consider the polar function given by r is equal to 4 times sine of 3 theta. We note that sine of n theta is maximized at 1, that is, when the argument n theta is equals to pi over 2, in which case theta will be at pi over 2n. Going back to our equation, we note that the length of each petal is given by the coefficient a, which in our case is 4. Secondly, we note that our first petal, where sine is maximized, will be at pi over 2n, where n in our case is 3. Hence our first petal will be at pi over 6. Since 3, our coefficient of theta, is odd, we have 3 petals in total. Hence the even spacing of 3 petals within 360 degrees or 2 pi radians is 2 pi divided by 3. Now let's consider the plot of the function in the Cartesian system with angle theta as our independent variable and radius r as our dependent. We note that the period for sine of 3 theta is the standard period 2 pi divided by 3. Hence we will sweep out an entire period for sine within a measure of 2 pi over 3 radians. Noting where sine attains its maximum altitude, we see that it's at an angle of pi over 6, the location of our first petal. Let's indicate this on our polar graph with a blue dot at an angle pi over 6 and a radius of 4 from the pole. Since all subsequent petals are exactly 2 pi over 3 radians apart, our second petal will be at 5 pi over 6 and our third at 3 pi over 2. Connecting all of the petals through the pole, we trace out our rows in polar coordinates. Note that in the Cartesian plane, the first region between zeros has a positive radius and corresponds directly to our first petal as shown on the polar graph. The second region between zeros in our rectangular representation has negative radii. Hence, we can see that the most negative value of our radius is at an angle of pi over 2, which I've indicated in orange. But on our polar graph, the same point is plotted in the direction of 3 pi over 2, that is, in the opposite direction of pi over 2. Let's move on to the pl plot of a rose involving cosine. Let's consider the function r is equals to 5 times cosine of 4 theta. We note that cosine is maximized at 0 radians, hence the argument n theta must equal 0, which implies theta itself is 0. Since the coefficient a is 5 in this second case, our petal length now will be 5. Given this is a cosine function, we know it will be maximized at 0, hence our first petal lies along the line theta equals to 0, or the positive x-axis. Since the coefficient of theta is 4, an even number, we have that the number of petals is doubled, that is twice 4, or 8. Hence the spacing of 8 petals evenly within 2 pi radians is 2 pi over 8, or pi over 4 radians. Once again, let's consider the plot of this function in Cartesian coordinates. We note that the period for this function is 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2 radians. Hence, we trace one full period of cosine within pi over 2 radians of measure. We can see that cosine is maximized at 0, the location of our first petal. Let's indicate this in blue on our polar graph at a radius of r equals to 5. Given that each petal is pi over 4 from the previous one, we can indicate the locations of each subsequent 
petal by placing blue dots. Hence our petals will be in the four cardinal directions as well as all 45 degree reference angles. Connecting the rows through the pole, we create our eight petaled graph. We note on the Cartesian graph that between zero and pi over eight radians, we have half the area of our first petal in polar. Continuing between the next two zeros, we note that our radius once again is negative and most negative at an angle of pi over four. Hence, on the polar graph, our corresponding petal will point in the opposite direction to angle pi over four, which of course is five pi over four. Finally, the remainder of what I've shown in rectangular form will once again sweep out only half the area of the subsequent petal which corresponds to a positive radius in the direction of the angle indicated. Thanks for playing and I'll see you next time.